So I'm going to do a video on um, glucose, an article in the New England Journal. And this is, I'll warn you beforehand, this is going to turn into a rant. Uh, it's the core of what uh, I've done over the past several years with uh, PrevMed. This is glucose control and vascular complications in the v VADT, uh, Veterans Administration Diabetes Trial. Um, <clears throat> this was an old study. It's uh, July 2009. Again, in a great, uh, a great uh, journal, the New England Journal. Now, why is this going to turn into a rant? Um, we threw the baby out with the bath water, um, <clears throat> and, there, and therefore are allowing and may, in many ways even promoting the number one cause of death, heart attack, stroke, diabetes, um, uh, dementia, because we saw some evidence that waiting till the patient has two decades worth of damage, after that point, quote, intensive diabetes control didn't help. Duh. Um, anyhow, but before we get into that, <clears throat> a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E um, I started off as an ER doc. Um, you work in the ER as a doc, you become focused on prevention because so much of what comes into the ER should never have been there. Or if, if it should have, maybe 20 years later. Um, I decided at that point, if it, even if it was going to make a bureaucrat out of me, I was still going to go into prevention. Went to Johns Hopkins to learn it, did well, ended up running the program. And for most of my 30-year career, I've been the medical director uh, of mid-size to large-size uh, primary care and prevention companies. Like The largest uh, was a company uh, called Premise. It's still out there. When I was there, we had about 500 clinics in um, uh, primary care and prevention. Uh, throughout the country. Uh, at this point, I think it's closer to 700. Um, <clears throat> my role uh, throughout most of my career has been to teach primary care docs and prevention docs how to do prevention. So <clears throat> one of the key areas here is this. And why, why is this series of studies, Accord, uh, UK, uh, prospective diabetes trial, the VA uh, diabetes trial. Why are all these, why am I getting, getting fired up about these? Well, they actually make an appropriate point that once you have a decade of recognized diabetes, not to mention the one or two decades of prediabetes in which the, uh, you're rotting your arteries, if you wait to, to the end point and start trying to control the A1C from 8 down to 6.5, it doesn't prevent heart attacks and strokes. Uh, duh. So, so again, let's, uh, let's go into the actual components of the study because this study still created a lot of flack. A lot of people just didn't believe it um, because, again, they thought if you wait that late and decrease the glucose just a little bit, it's going to help. I'm not surprised that it didn't. New England Journal, uh, VA uh, diabetes trial. This was a relative, it's been around for a while. These studies were all happening around 2007, 2008, 2009. Um, <clears throat> so what they did was they had a goal of getting an absolute decrease of 1.5% in uh, what, 1,400, let let's, let's go back, yeah. There were about 2,000, 1,791 um, VA patients. Mean age at that point was 60.4 years. Um, and the number of years since diagnosis of diabetes was 11.5. And again, think about it. How long does your, do, have you, did you have insulin resistance before you actually had a diagnosis of um, type 2 diabetes. And if you're 60 years old and a little pre-diabetic, this video and what I'm saying editorial-wise regarding this is for you. It's making the point that um, the damage is occurring during the pre-diabetic area or era, not after you've got diabetes. Now is the time to prevent your cardiovascular risk. 
so they had an absolute reduction of, or their goal was an absolute reduction of 1.5 uh, on hemoglobin A1C. Uh, I think the, I don't remember, but I think their the average hemoglobin A1C that they saw was in the eights. Yes, uh, average, mean hemoglo- median hemoglobin uh, A1C was 8.4. So their goal was to get it down to 6.9. My patients would listen to this and they'd say, you call that tight control? Again, uh, in in my practice at PrevMed, it's been an issue of finding prediabetes uh, in in the prediabetic stage and hitting it hard. And you'll see why. Uh, That's the opportunity for prevention. Uh, 12 years of diabetes and a hemoglobin A1C of 8.4 is not the time to try to prevent heart attack and stroke. And that's what these studies actually show. Uh, they had, uh, they ended up with 6.4, I mean 8.4 percent A1C in the, uh, in the standard treatment group. In the quote intensive group, they had a 6.9 percent A1C. Um, there was no significant difference in cardiovascular disease in these two groups. Again, I'm, I think you're beginning to get my point. Pardon my, the repetition, but I see it all day, every day. That's, that repetition needs to happen. And in fact, I would appreciate it if others helped me on this repetition. It's the pre-diabetic phase that you can actually impact this. It's not after you've had diabetes for a decade. Um, and so their conclusion was intensive glucose control in patients with poorly controlled type 2 diabetes had no significant effect on major cardiovascular events. It's true. Now, I, I will put the link to this study under the video, as I usually do, and it'd be worthwhile if you're interest, still interested at this point. I'm going to go through some of the other details. They've got a great lit review here. It helps uh, understand details around this issue that's really, it creates cognitive dissonance. You say, if if diabetes is killing most of us, then somebody's had diabetes, we want to decrease their blood sugar. Well, again, we'll talk about that. And they talk about it here. In epidemiological studies, the association between glucose control and cardiovascular disease, disease has not been consistent. Uh, the advanced trial, here, here's several of the trials that are involved in this. The advanced trial, the ACCORD trial, uh, the VADT trial, and uh, I covered the VADT, the, oh, actually, I'm, um, <clears throat> I am covering the VADT trial. That's what this one's about. Uh, there are a couple of others as well, but that's a good uh, list of the key studies that showed uh, trying to decrease blood glucose in, a, in someone with significant long-term disease really doesn't seem to help. Um, here's the discussion. Major cause uh, of uh, death and disability with type 2 diabetes is cardiovascular disease. More than 60% of these patients have cardiovascular disease and die with it. Prevalence of uh, vascular disease, hypertension, dyslipidemia, and other abnormalities is very high. Again, prediabetes rots your arteries. <clears throat> that's what this whole channel, channel was birthed around, and that was what the vast majority of my practice has been in, uh, in seeing individual patients in the PrevMed uh, practice. Interventions such as lifestyle, uh, blood pressure, lipids, and antiplatelet can reduce the development and uh, progression of cardio, cardiovascular um, uh, problems, but the question was, well, how about controlling the, uh, the diabetes a little bit better? Um, <clears throat> UK, uh, the UK Perspectives trial, UKPDS, they did not see it, um, but the, the, the concern on the, and, uh, and criticism of that trial was that it was less than strict blood pressure and lipid control. Um, so, uh, diabetes control trial did not see a significant reduction either. Um, <clears throat> EDIC, EDIC, the Epidemi- uh, Epidemiology of Diabetes Intervention in Car- Cardiovascular, showed a delayed benefit. So here's where we start to get to the real issue, and I think what the promise is, the promise of prevention, 
and we ignored all this. That's what drives me nuts. Um, <clears throat> okay, so 10 years after both, uh, after these trials, the patients in the previous intensive therapy group had significantly fewer cardiovascular events in the standard than the standard therapy group. So <clears throat> controlling that uh, blood sugar now is not going to help now. It's going to help 10 years from now. So again, if you're in your 40s, your 50s, and you think, I don't have diabetes, I don't, that's not the point. If you are developing prediabetes, this is the point when you can prevent your heart attack and stroke happening 10, 15, 20 years from now. You can take it to 20 or 30 years from now. Um, <clears throat> similar results were seen in the 10-year follow-up for the UK prospective diabetes studies. Um, there was no significant difference one year after. However, um, there was a significant difference 10 years after. The, the, this delayed effect may have been associated with the cumulative effects of hyperglycemia. Do you think? Okay. <clears throat> Intensive uh, glucose control did not re reduce cardiovascular events in accord or advanced, uh, the advanced trials. Um, now, the mean age, and they go into some details about comparing the, the age and the types of control in, the, in these several studies. Um, here was one of the issues. You might think that, well, by that point, the people having increased uh, death rate may have been due to hypoglycemia. In one of the studies, you did see that. In the other studies, you really didn't see um, hypoglycemia. In one of the studies, you saw increased weight gain. Well, that was because they were using more, in the intensive group, they were using more insulin and especially more rosiglitazone. Rosiglitazone causes, uh, both insulin and rosiglitazone cause weight gain. Insulin because of the fat. Rosiglitazone causes uh, weight gain because it causes you to um, take water on board and keep it on board. It can also increase uh, congestive heart failure. So those were just some of the things that you see with the study. Um, and if I didn't get the point across that prevention should be early, far earlier than we're, uh, than we're doing right now, I don't know what else to say. Thank you again for your attention for those of you that have lasted this long.